Hi, this is Hunter. I'm an applications engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems. And today I'd like to show you a few tips and tricks that I've found that have to do with constraining your arcs and circles in sketches. So let's dive right in and start a new sketch that contains just a couple of circles. And I'd like these two circles to be equal so I can box select from right to left and that's a crossing window select. So anything that is crossing that box will get selected and we'll make them equal. And to hold them horizontal to each other, I can use a relation or I can just draw a line connecting the two and make that line horizontal. Now I'll add a dimension to one of the circles. And all I need now is the distance between the two circles in order to fully define the sketch. So I get my dimension tool out, and I dimension from circle to circle. That gives me the center point distance between the two circles. So I'm going to hit escape twice just to deselect each circle. And this time I'll hold my shift key down on my keyboard. I'm going to select really near to the closest point between the circles. And notice that gives me the minimum distance between the circles. Hit escape a couple more times again, and I'll hold the shift key and the keyboard one more time. And this time I'll select near the outsides of the circles. And notice now I get the outer or the maximum dimension between those two circles. So let's make things a little more complicated. And let's say these are two cogs to be connected by a chain. And they're going to be of different sizes. So first I'm going to delete that equal relation. And we'll make the second circle a slightly different size, maybe uh, one and a half. And I'm going to use all of this geometry just as construction. Now, I don't generally like trimming things because that tends to delete relations and dimensions that you added intentionally. So I'm going to use this as a foundation, and I'll select everything and make it construction geometry. And now, to draw the chain, I'll get my line tool out, and I'm going to draw just sort of around these items, and then I'll constrain this chain to them later. So notice right away, uh, this chain of lines isn't going to work. I need an arc now. So a way I can get an arc is if I drag my mouse back to the point that the line started, and I drag away, notice now I'm in an arc. Similarly, I can just tap the A key on my keyboard, and that toggles me between a tangent arc and a line. So I'll tap A, there's an arc. And since I started with the line tool, notice after each arc I get a line again. So let's add another line, A key on the keyboard to get my second arc. And uh, I want to double check at this point that I have four tangent relations on my screen. Now if I missed one of them, my favorite thing to do to add tangent relations is once again to right to left box select the arc and the line in just one click to make tangent. Now it's just a little bit faster than holding the control key and independently selecting the line in the arc. So now I'm going to constrain these circles to my construction circles. Make them co-radial. And now I'd like to split the whole thing in half so I can create a revolve. Now for a revolve I need a half cross section. And right now I have a whole cross section. And once again, I'm not a huge fan of trimming things because that tends to delete relations and dimensions that I added intentionally. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the split entities command. Now, if split entities is not on your command manager, you can search for it in the search commands window. Just make sure you're searching for commands, not files or SOLIDWORKS help. And we'll just type in split. And there's my split entities command. And I can drag it onto my command manager from there. Likewise, I can hold the Alt key and I can drag any command off of the command manager to remove it. So I'll activate split entities and we'll split these two circles. And notice now, each quadrant is independently selectable. So let's draw a line going in between the two. And notice that line and the split points come in under defined by default. So I do need to make sure that I constrain that line. In this case, I'm just going to snap it to the quadrant so that now it's fully defined. And because I use split entities, now I can independently select all of these 
uh, bottom half entities and I'll make them construction geometry. So now I have my half cross section. We can exit my sketch and then create my revolve feature. All right, now this might just look a little boring, uh, having this straight line connecting to the two arcs. So let's transform this into a more of an egg-like shape. So I'll edit that sketch once again. And in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this line. Because by deleting it, I'm going to lose these tangent relations that are actually going to get in my way down the road. So I'll delete that line. And now I'll add a three-point arc connecting each endpoint, and then third click gives me my radius. And then I will make this new arc and those existing circles tangent on each end. And now all I need is the radius for this new arc that I just added. So I'll just get my dimension tool out. Let's add a radius and exit my sketch and now we have more of an egg-like shape. So just to conclude, I've shown a few tips and tricks for constraining arcs and sketches such as monitoring your tangent relations, proper use of construction geometry and splitting entities, as well as how to dimension between the outside and the inside or the minimum and maximum points of circles. Thank you for watching.